I just filed the divorce papers. I see. I guess there was no way we could talk things through in the end, huh? Why would you even say that after all this time? Surely you understand. We're not a good match, Arthur. Our values are different. Me and you are like oil and water. Even if we did give it another go, we'd only drive each other up the walls and be at each other's throats again within five minutes. Yeah, I know. We've done nothing but fight lately. We can't carry on like that. It won't be fair on Hannah. I know there's no salvaging our relationship, Bella. Anyways, this is the end. Surely there's nothing for us to discuss anymore? The only reason you're saying that is because you got your way. I just can't accept you taking custody of Hannah. Christ, Arthur! Are we really going to do this again? We've had this conversation a thousand times by now. I'm taking Hannah because it's her best interest to be with me. I'm only thinking about her happiness. This isn't personal. She's a girl. A girl needs to be with her mother. What would you know about bringing up a little girl? What would you do when she started puberty? When she had her first period, it's not possible for a guy to understand these things. So, how could you possibly give her the guidance she needs? Sure, but still. The only reason she's so clingy with you now is because she's young. She'd do a complete 180 when she got older. All teenage girls hate their dads, Arthur. That's a fact of life. She needs to be with her mom, and that's final. The only one who hates me is you. That's what I'm worried about. Don't be ridiculous. What is there to worry about? Can you really do this on your own? What's that supposed to mean? It means exactly what it sounds like. Do you understand how hard it's going to be financially to raise a little girl on your own? How are you going to do it on your salary? You barely bring it enough to look after yourself, let alone our daughter. Can you afford to send her to college? Wow, this is a new low even for you, Arthur. You're making fun of me because you make more money than me? You think you're so special with your high-paying job and your fancy car, don't you, jerk? Whoa, 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 whoa. Relax. I'm not making fun of you at all. I just think we should be realistic about this and accept that raising a little girl on your own is going to be tough. And even more so without the necessary funds. <sighs> Whatever. You were so making fun of me. You think you're so much better than me, don't you? No way. I just have genuine doubts, okay? Is that a crime? This is our daughter's future we're talking about here. You're going to have to raise her while holding down a full-time job. Have you even thought about the implications of that? Don't underestimate me. I'm more than capable of raising a little girl on my own. I'll be able to find a new job with a better salary if I put my mind to it. Really? Anyway, no matter what you say or how much doubt you pile on me, we're going our separate ways and there's nothing you can do to change my mind. I'll show you I can do it. You're gonna feel like such an idiot when you find out how well things are going. Jesus, Bella. Why do you speak like this is some kind of competition? All I want is what's best for our daughter. I'm not trying to one-up you. I know everyone makes fun of me. You all think I'm a useless, good-for-nothing with no redeeming qualities. No one thinks that about you. Yes, they do. Even my own freaking parents hate me. All they ever do is praise you. It's like you're the second coming of Jesus in their eyes. They think you can do no wrong because you work for a major company and make lots of money, Mr. Perfect. <laughs> what a joke. Well, you won't get the last laugh. Mark my words. I'm going to show you what I'm made of and you'll regret ever looking down on me. You all will. Jeez, point taken. 
I get it. You're gonna make a big fool of me and show the world how incredible you are, right? If you insist on waging this imaginary war in your mind, then who am I to stop you? Heck, I couldn't if I tried. But I want you to remember that if you're ever struggling, and I mean with anything, I'll always be a phone call away. I'll do whatever I can to help you and Hannah. I have nothing more to say to you, and that ain't gonna change. I'll be taking Hannah and moving somewhere far away with her soon. We don't need your help. I can do this on my own. Whoa, slow down a sec. You're moving? Where to? Out of state. The place I'm looking at would probably take you about four hours in the car. Bella, please, that's too far. Are you trying to stop me from seeing my daughter? If you want to see her, nothing will be stopping you from coming and seeing her. Of course, I never want to see you again. But you're welcome to see your daughter. What the hell? You're trying to make this as difficult for me as possible. At least let me stay in contact with her. In contact? Will you get her a phone? At least then I can message her. She shouldn't have a phone at her age. She can wait until she's in high school. Bella, please, will you compromise on this one thing? Was it getting your divorce and taking full custody enough for you? Now you're going to cut me out of her life completely? You could call me every name under the sun and hate me forever for all I care. But please, get my daughter a phone so I can at least talk to her. Fine. I'll buy her a phone. Happy now? Thank you. That means a lot to me. I want you to know that I don't blame you for everything that happened. It hurts that I didn't get custody of Hannah, but I know I made mistakes myself, and I won't try to deny that. I want you to know that I support you, and want you to succeed. You deserve to be happy. I just thought I'd let you know. We finished moving into our new house this morning. Hey, Bella. I see. Thank you for telling me. How's Hannah doing? She loves it here. There's a park right outside the front door. She did a little song and dance when I told her she could go out and play whenever she wanted. She was over the moon. You said you were going by her a phone, right? How's that looking? You didn't forget your promise, did you? Ugh, don't rush me, Arthur. I just finished moving house for crying out loud. Do you know how stressful that is? We don't even have our things unpacked, and you want me to go out and buy a phone? It can wait. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll download the Messenger app and add you to her contacts. Will that satisfy you? Sure, that's a great start. Thanks. Would you mind teaching her how to actually use the thing, though? It might be a little overwhelming for her. Don't be silly. All kids these days know how to use smartphones. Oh, perfect. She says she wants to speak to you. She can show you her skills right now. Daddy, it's Hannah. Hannah! That's my girl. How did you get so good at using smartphones? I practiced. I can even type faster than Mom. I always knew you were a genius. That's great. This means we'll be able to skeek all the time. Mommy says she's gonna buy me one. <laughs> Can you believe it? My very own phone! I know, sweetie. I'm so pleased for you. Isn't it great? Now, we'll be able to skeek wherever we want to. Me and you are going to be living a little far away from each other from now on, but at least we can still stay in touch. I want you to message me whenever you feel like it. But Mommy said I can only use my phone an hour per day. Other than that, she said I can only use it to speak to you. Smartphones are amazing and all kinds of convenient, but they also come with lots of hidden dangers, sweetie. I'm sure your mom will let you use it more when you're older and get even better with it. For the time being, you'll have to make do with your hour a day, 
Which is a long time, you know. There are kids in some part of the world who don't have smartphones at all. You're very lucky. Wow, really? I'm lucky? Cool. Daddy? Do you and Mommy love me? Of course we do, sweetie. We love you very, very much. You're the most important person in the world to us. I love you guys too. Your mom's going to be looking out for you from now on. But I'll always be here on the other end of the phone. And we can talk anytime. Your mom's going to be working really hard to look after you. So I want you to look after her too. Can you do that for me? I will, Daddy. But I don't want to move school. I know it feels difficult now. But you'll have tons of new friends before you know it. Moving might be scary. But all it actually needs is lots more new, exciting things for you to discover, and amazing people to meet. I guess. It's been great to speak to you, sweetie. Happy now? I have stuff to unpack. Sure thing. Thank you. And good luck. I know you can do this. I don't need you to tell me that. Me and you are probably never gonna see each other again. Goodbye. Daddy. Huh? Hannah? I didn't expect to hear from you this late on New Year's Eve. Is your mom still awake? I'm all on my own. At this time of night? Ah, I take your mom's at work? Wanna do the New Year countdown together? No. Daddy, help me! I'm so cold, I think I might pass out! You're cold? Wait, are you outside? I'm in the house. You need to turn on the heating, sweetie. Do you know how to do it? It won't turn on. Gah, is it broken? It's not broken. It got cut off. The lights won't turn on either. It's pitch black, plus the gas got cut off. The lights and gas too? Seriously? Are you sure the lights definitely won't turn on? What do you mean they got cut off? Was there a power cut? Oh, they just won't turn on! Mom said the gas and power got cut off. Oh, it's snowing like crazy outside. Oh, I'm so cold, Daddy. Listen to me, sweetie. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to get into bed and wrap yourself up nice and warm under the duvet. Mom must have a duvet too, right? Take hers, wrap yourself up with both of them. They might feel a little heavy, but you'll be warm. Why did the gas and power get cut off? Did your mom have enough money? Probably not. I only get to eat once a day. There are some days where I... All I eat is my free f school lunch. Wow. Things are that desperate? Your mom is working, right? Mm -hmm. She goes to work every day. But she says she got fired from her last job. And that's why we don't have any money. Fired? Wow. Sounds like your mom's been having a hard time. I'm on winter vacation now, so I don't even get my school lunches anymore. There's nothing to eat, Daddy. I'm so hungry. Hold tight, baby. I'm gonna come to you. Really? It might take me a while in this blizzard. But just rack yourself up in those suvets, like I said, and hold on tight till I get there, okay? Daddy, Mommy said I wasn't meant to tell you about the things with the heating and lights getting cut off. But I couldn't take it anymore. I'm sorry. It's fine, baby. You don't have to say sorry. You did nothing wrong. I'm proud of you for letting me know. I have no way of knowing you're in trouble unless you tell me. So thank you. Is mommy gonna get angry with me? If she does, she's in the wrong. Don't worry, sweetie. I'll speak to her. I'm coming to help you now. You have to hurry, please. 
live with you again, Daddy. <laughs> Please don't leave me. <laughs> Hello again, Bella. It's been a while. Did you get off work yet? Huh? What do you want? Working through New Year's Eve until the early hours? That's rough. Do you work night shift now? I said, what do you want? It didn't take you long to move again. You've barely been there five minutes. The place was completely empty. What? Why would you try coming to my house? How dare you? Because Hannah sent me a desperate plea for help. She was trembling with cold and hunger when I got there. It turns out you've been making her live in abject poverty. When you got there? What are you talking about? I got Hannah to find out the new address for your new place and came over to help her. I've never seen such a sorry looking excuse for a house in my life. I hear the gas and electric got cut off too. Did Hannah call you? Ugh, how dare she defy me like this? Tell me what's going on, Bella. How did things get so bad? Did you struggle to find a new job? No, I had a job at a good company. But I had some problems with my coworkers. I heard you got fired? I had no choice but to voluntarily resign. They let me jump before I got pushed. What the hell did you do? I didn't do anything. It's just that one of the guys there took a disliking to me and fed the boss a pack of nonsensical lies. He made a formal complaint against me. He said I was ruining the work environment and I got forced to step down. You always did have a hard time dealing with people, huh? Remember when I used to tell you being so abrasive with everyone was going to come and bite you in the ass one day? Abrasive? I'm not abrasive. Probably just made him feel insecure because I was so good at my job. It was jealousy. I know it. He must have gone round the whole office, bad-mouthing me. Because he somehow convinced everyone else to back him up. And before I knew it, I'm getting called into the boss's office being told I have to leave. I see. So then what? You found something else, right? I did, but it's only part-time. I make less than half the money I did at my old job. Less than half? The economy's in a bad way right now. Jesus, Bella. Why did you tell me you were going through such hard times? You know I've been there to help in a heartbeat. Would you really sooner let the gas and electric get cut off than reach out for help? Hannah was living like a kid in a third world country when I found her. Even if I did tell you, you would have just made fun of me. You would have probably burst out laughing like, Haha, Bella's struggling. I knew she'd be lost without me. There was no way I was going to give you the satisfaction. Wow, you're paranoid. I'm not out to get you, Bella. I'm on your side. Liar! I know that's what you would have said. Things should have never ended up this way. Everything was going well for a while. I know you gave this your all. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! You know nothing! Give me my daughter back or I'll call the police! Jeez, would you just calm down and talk to me? I said give her back! I don't need your help. I don't need you in my life at all. So just give me back my daughter and get lost! Quit sticking your nose in my business! That's enough! Pull yourself together! Quit subjecting your daughter to a life of poverty to shield your wounded pride! My wounded pride? What's that supposed to mean? I'm doing my best here. What does it matter if Hannah can barely eat? What does it matter if she spends her days crying alone under piles of duvets? You're clearly not capable of raising a child right now. You should have asked for help or given her up before things got this bad. Do you have any idea how much she suffered because you were too proud to admit you couldn't cope? You think you're so perfect, don't you? Get off your high horse and quit preaching at me. This is the last thing I need. These aren't just my words. 
Huh? Where do you think I am right now? I'm at your parents' house. Why? Your dad might have retired recently, but he was still a doctor for four decades. I brought Hannah over so you could take a look at her. None of the doctors are open since it's New Year's Day. Why didn't you just take her to the ER? Why did you have to take her to my parents? You had no right to do this! I couldn't take her to the ER. It's not like she has any major injuries or anything. They would have turned us away at reception. She just seems weak and malnourished, so I thought taking her to see your dad was like best option. I still had this number in my phone, so I gave him a call. He told me to bring her over. Does that mean my parents know about my situation too? Yeah, they know. They're sat next to me right now. They were so worried about you. They know how stubbornly proud you are. They knew you'd rather hit rock bottom than actually admit you need help and rely on them or anyone else. They told you countless times they always be here for you, but you refuse to reach out. They know you better than you know yourself. Oh my god. So you're all together, laughing about me? No one's laughing, Bella. This isn't a laughing matter. We're just at a loss. How are we supposed to help you if you won't let us? Your dad was so shocked when I told him how bad things had gotten. You mean when he found out what a worthless, good-for-nothing his daughter is? I mean, how could I be anything else? I never had what it took to become a respected doctor, not like him. I was always the black sheep of my family. I failed my med school entrance exams and had no choice to go to a subpar college. Which meant I got an unfulfilling job at a nameless company in a boring industry full of high school dropouts! Bella, do you have an inferiority complex because you couldn't become a doctor like your dad? Did anyone give you a hard time about not getting into med school? No, no one. You want to know what made me realize? How pathetic I am. I'm carrying Mary to you. Me? We both graduated at the same crappy college. And yet, there you were with your high-paying executive job at a major company. I got sick of hearing everyone praise you when we were together. You were always the center of attention, but no one ever had a good word to say about me. I'll admit it. I felt kind of proud to hear everyone singing my man's praises at first, but I soon got tired of it. Then I started to feel jealous, and eventually, I began to hate you. Wow, I see. So that's why you divorced me. I understand you might have been frustrated, but that still doesn't explain or justify what happened with Hannah. She never was suffered like this if you just admitted you weren't coping and reached out for help. I'm taking her. No! You're not! I won't allow it! Me and your parents had a lengthy discussion, and that's what we decided on. I'm taking custody of Hannah, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. It's in her best interest that she lives with me. It's time to get real, Bella. You can barely afford to look after yourself. Let alone our daughter. Not having her to worry about should line the load on you a little. Think about it. You'll finally have room to breathe. No! I was just about to get things back on track, I swear! Things were finally starting to look up. You can't snatch her away from me now. Do you think I'm only talking about money here? Don't get me wrong. Your financial situation is dire. But that isn't the biggest problem. That isn't what worries me the most about you raising our daughter. What worries me the most is you and your personality. Do something about that stirring pride of yours, and then maybe we could talk. Well, are you saying I have a problem? I'm not saying it's a bad thing to have feelings of pride. I'm not even saying it's a bad thing to be stubborn sometimes. But we live in a society, and that society has other people in it. As much as it might suck, there are times when we have to swallow that cry for the sake of others. The fact that you're so incapable of doing that tells me that you still have a lot of growing up to do. And I can't leave my daughter and her future in the hands of someone like that. 
You can't raise a child when you're still a child yourself. After a lengthy, emotional discussion with her parents, Belle was persuaded to give up Hannah, reluctantly accepting their point of advice in floods of tears. She was just about able to scrape a living on her own after having the weight of raising Hannah lifted from her shoulders. I hope this whole episode gave her cause for reflection on how things got this way, who she is as a person, and who she wants to be going forward. I'll be honest, I feel like stubbornness that a stream falls more into the category of mental disorder than personality quirk, and I can't say for sure where she'll overcome it, but I hope from the bottom of my heart that she does. Forget raising our daughter, she'll be lucky if she can even hold down a job because she carries going on through life acting like that. After all, what's work all about if not coexisting and cooperating with others towards a common goal? How can you do that if the word compromise isn't even in your vocabulary? Hana was soon back to her old, bright, bubbly self after moving in with me. I made sure she knew how proud I was for the bravery she showed in breaking her mom's rules and reaching out. She went through a lot, and the last thing she needs is to feel guilty on top of it. I have an obligation as her dad to be her rock, so when she knows she can rely on in times of trouble, and I'm committed to honoring that obligation with every fiber of my being. Hey there, Harriet. Can I ask you something? Sorry if you're at work. If you're busy, I can wait. It's okay. I'm free now. What's wrong? How do people build relationships with their daughter-in-laws? I feel like I don't have a clue what I'm doing. You mean Alyssa? What do you mean you don't have a clue what you're doing? Did something happen between you guys? Well, it's not necessarily that something happened. Oh, Harriet, tell me something. Do you and Alyssa get along well? Not really. We're friendly enough when we see each other and we might make small talk but the conversation never goes beyond the weather or how we've been lately. Saying we get along would be stretching it. Uh, I don't think we're getting along so well either. I want us to be close, I really do. But I don't know how to go about it. I don't even know where to start. She's Benjamin's wife, so I want us to at least have the kind of relationship where we can laugh and joke together. Does Alyssa actually laugh and joke? It's hard to imagine. Hmm. Well, now that you mention it, she doesn't seem much the type. She always seems so dry and expressionless, and her reactions to pretty much everything I ever say are always lukewarm and unenthusiastic. It's so hard to figure out what's going on in her head. I've seen brick walls that show more emotion than her. Alyssa's always seemed... How to put this? The cool type? To frame it positively, that calm, collected, no hex given vibe. I definitely see how you could interpret it as cold disinterest, though. Most people could never pull it off, but she's so drop dead gorgeous that her lack of readable facial expressions gives her an air of intensity and mystique. She doesn't strike me as particularly sociable, though. I'm sparing no effort to try and get closer to her. I'm really trying my best, you know. But no matter what I do, nothing seems to work. Just a few days ago, I invited her out to do some shopping and have lunch with me. But she turned me down in the bluntest way possible. <sighs> I wonder if she hates me. Isn't it just because she's pregnant? You know how awful morning sickness can be. Maybe she's just going through a rough patch and doesn't feel up to doing much. I did consider that, but the way she turned me down was so cold, she may as well have just said, You're a pain in the ass, get lost. If she feels under the weather, surely she could have just said so and politely declined. I'm her mother-in-law for crying out loud. She always seems to look at me with these cold, disdainful eyes. She's like that with everyone, though. I've literally never seen her smile. Don't you think it's more likely she just struggles to pick up on certain things because she's so detached? Some people find social stuff easier than others. I'm sure there's no ill will behind it. <sighs> I wonder. I really am trying to get closer to her. But it's like the more I try, the higher she builds that impenetrable wall she insists on closing herself in 24-7. 
We're family now, and I worry for the future if we can't build some kind of relationship. I understand how you feel. Who knows? Maybe she'll change when she gives birth to the baby. People do say having kids changes you, right? Take my friend Beth. She's a prime example. She used to be so quick to lose her temper, but after having little Reginald, she has the patience of a saint. Maybe that happens in rare cases, but you know not everyone's like that. Take you, for example. You're still just as short-tempered and crank as ever. Um, what the hell, Mom? Rude. Uh, I'm not wrong, though. Fine, point taken. I guess there is a chance she'll brighten up a little bit once she has the baby. I really hope things improve between us. I heard Alyssa just got discharged from the hospital. Did you see the pictures of her and the baby? He looks so healthy. And she seems to be doing well, too. I'm so pleased. I know, right? Oh, what a little bundle of joy. I can't wait to meet him. I'm relieved they're both fine. Not sure what kind of congratulations present to get her, though. Diapers? Dummies? Assorted expendables? I have no idea. Did you get her anything yet? I did indeed. I wanted to give her something the baby could eat straight away, so I sent over some jelly. I was thinking about getting her some baby clothes as well. But you know how fussy she can be, and I didn't want to get the baby anything she didn't like. Along with food, I'm still not sure what else to get her, though. She's such an impenetrable fortress of a human being. It's hard to imagine what kind of present she'd actually appreciate. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. I'm struggled to decide, too. Oh, she has to be the hardest person to buy for I've ever known. And not only that, but come to think of it, I sent the stuff a while back, but I haven't heard anything from her at all. I seriously racked my brains to come up with something I thought she'd like. Really? With it being a celebration gift, I thought it'd be better that she have it earlier rather than late. So I bought it and sent it off ASAP. I haven't heard so much as a word on whether it's arrived, let alone a thank you. You'd think she'd thank me at the very least, wouldn't she? I'm sure if it arrived, she would have. Maybe there was an issue with the delivery or something. Or maybe she's just had so much on her plate, what with the birth and all that, that she forgot. <sighs> I wonder... What if she's just ignoring me because she hates me? No way. Why would she hate you? You're overthinking this, Mom. I'm sure there's a simple explanation for this. It probably just didn't arrive yet. Things get delayed all the time due to issues with transit and whatnot. I don't think I told you about this, but I happened to hear something about Elisa recently. Apparently, she said that she finds presents from strangers scary. What if she thinks of me as a stranger and refused the delivery when my present arrived? How could anyone possibly think of their own mother-in-law as a stranger? You hear about cases of wives hating their mother-in-laws all the time. In the soap operas, in the movies, in the news, on talk shows. Hating your mother-in-law is practically an American tradition at this point. Well, it doesn't look like she hates you to me. Not even a little. I get that her attitude and demeanor are cold, but she's like that with everyone. Why take it personally? But could there really be an issue with the delivery? I used the best delivery company I could find. I even paid extra for first-class shipping to make sure I'd get there in time for the birth. It should have been there the day after I sent it, and I didn't get any kind of notification telling me anything was wrong. It makes no sense that she hasn't messaged me yet. Yeah, I guess... It is a little strange. How about you try sending your gifts and see what happens? Let's see whether she thanks you straight away. Hey, Alyssa, how are you? My mom sent you a present, but wasn't sure if it arrived yet. Did you get it? Hey, Harriet. The package from your mom, right? It just arrived now. I threw it in the trash immediately. Huh? Why would you do that? Apparently, it got sent to the wrong address due to an issue with delivery. It took ages to arrive. No, I don't mean why it only just arrived. I mean, why did you throw it away? You're joking, right? 
You threw away Mom's present? She sent that to congratulate you on the birth. Why would I be joking? Yes, I threw it away. Did your mom put you up to this? Is that why you're messaging me? Well, she did mention it to me, but she hardly put me up to anything. She said she sent you a present a while back, but hadn't heard anything back from you. She's been really worried that you might have been ignoring her. I just wanted to check. That's all. Ugh. Your mom's been giving me all sorts of presents for a while now. It's true that I almost never thank her. I have no intention of thanking her this time either. What the hell? Why not? Why on earth would you toss a present in the garbage when someone went out of their way to buy it for you? I was sure you'd already gotten it, but we're just ignoring her. This is a thousand times worse than I thought. Look, Harriet, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I don't want her presents. You don't want them? How can you be so heartless? Well, what would you think if someone kept giving you gifts you never asked for like that? I bet you wouldn't want them either. Look, I understand that the things she gets you might not always be exactly to your preferred specifications, but Mom's doing her absolute best to pick you things she thinks you'd like. She's really trying to get along with you here. These presents are kind gestures meant to show her affection for you. I'd prefer it if you didn't throw her efforts back in her face like this. Affection? <laughs> Please, don't make me laugh. Affection is the last thing your mother feels towards me. I've never heard something so laughably stupid in my life. How can you say that? Because your mom sends me nothing but trash. Trash? Their presence only in name. All she sends me is spoiled rotten food. Take the jelly she just sent me. It was crawling with maggots and smelled like a landfill. Isn't that just because it arrived later than expected? You yourself just said that there was an issue with the delivery. It's only natural foodstuffs would spoil if delivery got delayed. Do you seriously think Jelly would be crawling with maggots after a poxy delay of a few days? Besides, it's Jelly. It's supposed to keep at room temperature. In spite of that, it was so rotten it had changed color. And had so many maggots writhing around in it, I could have sold it to an angling society. I shudder to think what would have happened to my insides if I ate it. I wish she'd just leave me alone already. I don't need this. Are you saying she keeps sending you rotten food? My mom? Every single one of her presents? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. She usually sends me about one package per month. That often? But I can't believe it. Why would she do such a thing? This makes no sense. Why would my mom do this? If you want proof, I have it. I have a copy of every single invoice from every present she ever sent me. Haven't you spoken to my brother about this? Surely your mother-in-law sending you garbage disguised as presents is something you'd mention to Benjamin. I haven't told my husband anything. I can't, Harriet. He's busy enough as it is. I don't want to worry him. As far as he's concerned, me and your mother get along like a house on fire. But why would my mom do something like that? It makes no sense at all. What does she get out of it? I think it's obvious why she's doing it. Because she never liked me from the get-go, and because she never approved of me marrying her son. She's had it in for me ever since we met. You guys might not have noticed because she's a good actress, and she knows when to hide her true feelings. Wow. Given how much she hates me, I'm sure that in her mind, rotten food is the most appropriate present there could possibly be. To be honest, I don't know what you think of me either, Harriet. But I know with dead certainty, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that your mom hates me with a burning passion. Why do you think I keep my distance from her? I see. So that's why. Oh my god, Alyssa, I'm so sorry for everything my mom did to you. Hey, Harriet. So did you decide what you're going to send Elisa to celebrate the birth yet? Food, clothes, toys? 
I haven't made up my mind yet. Well, I decided to resend my present. I thought about what you said, and you're right. There is a chance that there was an issue in transit and didn't make it. I sent the second one yesterday evening, so it should be arriving any time now. Yes, it arrived just now, actually. Uh, excuse me? How would you know my present had arrived at Elisa's house? Because me and Alyssa just opened it together. You opened it together? What? Why would you do such a thing? I don't know, Mom. You tell me. Why would you do such a thing? It was packed with rotten fruit. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? Let me guess. You didn't have time to wait for more jelly to rot, so you just used fruit instead? Am I right? The stench when we opened it up. Good God! Wait a second. Why would you do that? What's going on? Where are you right now? Explain yourself. I'm at Benjamin and Alyssa's house. I'm with Alyssa right now. Why? What on earth brought this on? I've never known you to go to their house before. Not only that, but you and Elisa are together? Since when were you two bosom buddies? I didn't think you got along. Not a single one of the questions you just asked me is relevant to what I asked you. You seem to have forgotten, so allow me to remind you. We were discussing the matter of you sending your daughter-in-law rotting garbage disguised as presents? No, 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 no. Just hold on a minute. What the hell's going on here? Yes, that's what I'm asking you, Mom. You've been sending presents to Alyssa regularly for a long time now, haven't you? She kept all the invoices. There's a nice neat pile of them here on the living room table in front of us. She kept hold of them as proof of what you were doing. The contents of your presents are never anything but rotten garbage. Garbage? How dare you call my presents garbage? No, there has to be some kind of mistake here. Why on earth would I send my daughter-in-law rotting garbage? Come on, Harriet. What kind of person do you take me for? Then what exactly is this stinking maggot-infested pile of decaying mush before my eyes? It literally couldn't be any more rotten. Not a single piece of this fruit is still edible. What's your end game? Did you intend for her to eat this stuff? Were you trying to make her physically sick, or did you just want to upset her? Why would my fruit be spoiled? It looked fine when I sent it. The firmest, shiniest apples, the plumpest, juiciest oranges, the most delightfully sweet grapes you could ever hope to eat. I never meant to send anything rotten, I promise. Ah, oh, I know. It must have gotten bad in transit. You know it has been unreasonably hot lately. All it would take is for one careless delivery driver to leave it out in the sun for a little too long. You only sent it yesterday, Mom. The most negligent delivery guy in the world couldn't make a box of fresh fruit go rotten in the space of a day. And what do you mean, unseasonably hot? It's winter, for God's sake. This stuff was obviously already rotten when you put it in the box. No, you're wrong. I wouldn't do that. The delivery company must have made some kind of mistake. I don't know anything about this, and that's God's honest truth. You can drop the act now, Mom. I know everything. You know? What exactly do you know, sweetie? I know about how you've been subjecting Alyssa to a vicious bullying campaign ever since she and Benjamin got married. She never hated you. You were the one who hated her all along. And you're such a sick, twisted liar that you actually tried to convince me it was the other way around. And I was starting to believe you. Ugh! It's over, Mom. I know. If there's a shred of decency in there somewhere, you'll just admit it. Well, can you blame me? That girl is poison. Can I take this as an admission that you hate her? Yes, I do. I hate her. I hate her more than anything else on this planet. Why? It was just the other day you were telling me how much you wished you two could get along. What happened to that? Oh, please, Harriet. Are you that gullible? I was obviously lying. I just wish she'd hurry up and disappear from the face of the earth. She'd be doing all of us a favor. Why do you hate her so much? What did she ever do to deserve this? She's so arrogant, she practically lives up to her own backside. I've never known someone with such an excessively high opinion of themselves. 
She thinks the fact that she happens to be good-looking gives her the license to trot around on her high horse with that godforsaken supercilious pout on her face. That stuck-up bimbo, ugh! Her standoffish attitude rubs me the wrong way, and it has done ever since I laid eyes on the girl. That's what you think of her? Oh, to think a woman like that is now the mother of my grandson. She's beyond brazen. That boy Benjamin needs to get his head checked out if that's his idea of a suitable mother. I mean, please, what's wrong with him? Why would he marry someone so cold and unfriendly? I can't believe it. I had no idea you hated her this much. I can't believe you either, Mom. What do you mean? She's the one in the wrong here. If she just act like a normal human being, none of this would have ever happened. I simply cannot tolerate that gloomy, depressing personality of hers. A fake smile would do every now and then, you know? But no, she's so far above everyone else that she can't even bring herself to do that. What's wrong with that? She's just shy. That doesn't make her a criminal, nor does it mean she thinks she's better than anyone else. Like I said, some people find social stuff easier than others. She's not gloomy or depressing either. She's lovely and she's kind. She is gloomy. She's not a suitable wife for my son. I've hated her ever since the day we met. If he even had a single brain cell, he'd file for divorce right now. Hi, Nancy. Do you really hate me that much? Excuse me? It's me, Alyssa. It's been a while. Well, well, well. If it isn't my dimwit son's worthless failure of a wife. You've really gone and done it this time, haven't you? What kind of disgusting lies have you been filling my daughter's head with? You will pay for this, mark my words. You've never acknowledged me as your daughter-in-law. You don't think of me as family at all, do you? Of course I don't. Why would I acknowledge a lying witch like you as family? Right, that's what I thought. That's why I've thought of you as nothing but a stranger this whole time. In-law or not, I have no intention of acknowledging someone who treats me the way you do as my mother. I'd have to be crazy to accept any kind of present from the likes of you. And that's why I started sending them away unopened. The likes of me? Oh, how dare you! Whether you acknowledge me as your family or not makes no difference to me, you miserable little cretin! Harriet said the same thing. My daughter? Don't be so ridiculous. What are you even saying? It's just like Alyssa says, Mom. As far as me and Benjamin are concerned, you're nothing but a stranger to us now, and neither of us want anything to do with you ever again. Even just knowing we're related makes me shudder with embarrassment. What? Y you and Benjamin... What? You've been trying to make Alyssa eat rotten food for months and months now. You're sick in the head, and you need help. Who in their right mind would do that? This is not normal behavior. What were you even trying to accomplish? You've been sending these presents of yours for over six months now. I can't believe you try to make a pregnant woman eat things you know for a fact would pose a threat to her and her baby. Your grandchild's health. What would you have done if something happened to her? Oh, what's all the fuss about? No harm was done. All's well that ends well. Nothing happened, so there's no problem here. Why must you insist on making a mountain out of a molehill? The only reason nothing happened is because Alyssa was attentive enough to notice. If she'd eaten any of that without realizing, who knows what could have happened? She could have ended up in the hospital with food poisoning, or worse. Not just Alyssa, but the baby, too. I couldn't give a damn about what happens to that girl. How could I possibly love anything that she gave birth to? The kid can go to the hospital with her for all I care. Do you understand how much I hate her now? Is it going in yet? It's going in, Mom. I completely understand. I understand that there's nothing to be gained by continuing this conversation. Just as I said before, you and me are strangers now. You'll never see me at the house or hear from me again. Please, darling, just wait. 
Why so hasty? We can talk about this, can't we? Surely you wouldn't go to such drastic lengths over something so trivial. The fact that you're capable of describing what you did to Alyssa as trivial only strengthens my resolve to cut you out of my life forever. What you did is no different than physical abuse. I suggest you put your phone down, go and sit on your own, and think long and hard about the life path you've chosen. Once more, we're strangers now, and me or Benjamin don't ever want to hear from you again. You're going to abandon your aged mother? You wouldn't. How can you call me a stranger? You're my baby, Harriet. We could never be strangers. We're family, darling. How could you treat me so horribly? What you did to your son's wife was a damn sight more horrible than anything we're doing. Just because you hate someone doesn't give you the right to try and poison them. Why did you have to go and act like a complete psychopath? If you don't like someone, all you have to do is keep your distance. Just like me and Benjamin are about to do with you. <coughs> After that, I didn't contact my mom at all for a while. I also told Alyssa she never had to have anything to do with her again, as well as reported the entire thing to Benjamin. I also told him never to let his guard down in the event that our mom attempted to exact any kind of revenge in the future and to protect his wife at all costs. Benjamin had no idea what had been going on these past six months. His world was flipped upside down in an instant, and he was rendered speechless in sheer astonishment. To protect his wife and son from his deranged mother, he put as much distance between them and any other shared ties they had as he possibly could. Me and my brother were in total agreement that we'd probably never forgive our mom for what she did. I don't think our mom took word of her children severing all ties with her well, and she showed up at both Benjamin and Alyssa's, as well as my house, crying hysterically and begging for forgiveness. But things were still too raw, and there was no way either of us were willing to even consider the idea of reconciliation so soon after what she did. Whether we do eventually allow her back into our lives one day remains to be seen. If we do, we'll discuss it as brother and sister and proceed very, very carefully. Um, Colin? I just heard from Mom. Apparently you're going to be living at her place for a little while? So what if I am? She said you showed up outside the house with all your belongings without even so much as a phone call to let her know you were coming. Don't you think you're being just a little selfish here? You could have at least asked first. Get off my back, Jane. I had no choice. I got a letter saying the apartment block my room was in was set to be demolished. They basically told me to get out on a moment's notice. What else was I supposed to do? Wow, really? Surely they gave you some compensation or provided you with some kind of temporary accommodation if you had to leave straight away. Sure, I am getting a payout, but that doesn't mean I could just snap my fingers and find somewhere else to stay right away. They didn't offer me any accommodation, so I'm on my own. I'm just staying at Mom's as a stopgap while I get back on my feet. What's the problem with that? Isn't this what family are for? I guess it does make sense to stay with Mom if that's the case. But still, you should have asked for her permission first, or at least told her you were coming. You haven't been in touch with her for years, and suddenly you just show up outside her house with all your stuff? No matter which way you look at it, it's not fair on her. I heard you got married, too? Yep, I got married last year. What was her name again? Yasmin? My jaw almost hit the floor when Mom told me. Why didn't you tell me? I know we've never been that close, and we don't have to speak all the time, but you could have at least dropped me an update on the most important day of your life. It's easy to say that, but it hasn't been easy for me to keep in touch with you guys. Dad said he was done with me and cut me out of his life. He told me to never bother you guys again, remember? That's because you got up to your ears in gambling debt and pulled a vanishing act after the debt collector started showing up at our house demanding money. 
It's hardly surprising he'd want you gone from his life after pulling a stunt like that. But Dad's dead now. I thought now would be a good time for me to come back. You didn't even show up at his funeral. He cut me out of his freaking life! What was I meant to do? Show up and pretend everything was hunky-dory? Listen, Jane. My pride's taking a hit with everything that's going on right now. I'm not exactly enjoying coming running back to Mommy for a place to stay. But look at it from my perspective. I had nowhere else to go. What's the problem? It's not like I'm causing you any trouble. It doesn't even affect you. But it's okay for you to cause Mom trouble? Mom's really thoughtful and kind. She won't see it that way. So it's fine. You're not the one who gets to decide whether it's fine or not. Jeez. You make it sound like I'm forcing her to put me up for nothing in return. And I hope you're not. I hope you're at least going to contribute to the basic living expenses. I'm not going to help out monetarily. But Mom asked me if I help sort through some things. So I'm going to contribute to the household by doing that instead. She said she wanted me to sort out all the stuff he left behind in his will. So I'm going to be throwing a lot of stuff away. You know, like ancient chests of drawers, ornaments, stuff like that. Mom's house isn't exactly Buckingham Palace. And she says she wants to replace some of her old furniture soon. So we're going to need the space. If Mom says that's what she wants, I have no objections. But you better not cause her any trouble, Colin. I mean it. She's not as young as she used to be, and the last thing she needs is a bunch of extra stress after losing Dad. Not only that, but I hear your wife's going to be moving in with you, too. Mom's kind of friendly. I'm sure her and Yasmin will be getting along like a house on a fire before we know it. What does Yasmin think about moving in with her mother-in-law? Wasn't she against the idea? I know it might only be short term, but living with the mother-in-law isn't exactly at the top of most people's list of priorities. Yasmin's carefree and easygoing. She takes whatever life throws at her with a spring in her step and a smile on her face. She's just grateful we're going to have a place to stay. She knows we're in no position to be picky. I see. Well, I'm pleased she's being so open-minded about the whole thing. She sounds like a good egg. Look after Mom while you're with her, okay, Colin? I'm counting on you. I don't want you taking advantage of her kind, trusting nature. Jeez, sis, what do you take me for? It's not like that. Mom's done a lot for me. And I see this as an opportunity to show her how grateful I am to have her. Take a chill pill, okay? Rest assured, I'm not plotting any evil schemes like you seem to think I am. <laughs> Mom's going to be fine. In fact, she'll be better off having us around. Colin, Mom says you still haven't moved out of her house. Yep. We can't find anywhere else to stay. You know full well Mom told you to hurry up and find somewhere else ASAP. You said yourself staying with her was only supposed to be a stopgap while you got back on your feet. Yeah, what the hell? She told us to get out. She's being so horrible to us. You'd think she'd be over the moon to be reunited with her beloved son after all this time. Not only that, but she should be grateful to have my amazing wife around the house to grind the place up. You may have forgotten this, but you guys aren't living with Mom because she wanted you to. Sure, maybe not. But what kind of wife willingly volunteers to go and live with her mother-in-law these days? Mom doesn't know how lucky she is. Mom's health is deteriorating, and she can't walk as well as she used to. I don't know what's wrong with her. She should have more peace of mind with us there. Obviously not, if she's asking you to find somewhere else to live ASAP. 
Why is it so hard for you to just respect her wishes? She's her own person and she's used to living on her own. She doesn't have to want you there. Besides, you said it'd only be two months at most, which means you pretty much deceived her. It's only normal she'd be mad about that. Your lucky dad isn't around to see this. It's been three months already. It's not my fault. We can't find any nice houses. What am I supposed to do? Live in some crappy beat up old bungalow? Would you be happy then? She's doing you a favor, Colin. You're hardly in any position to be picky. If living in an old bungalow is what it takes to respect mom's wishes, then that's what you should do. Oh yeah, and how could I forget? I hear you've been selling mom's belongings without permission? What the hell is wrong with you? You have no right to do that! It's called cleaning up. Mom's the one who asked me to do it. No, she asked you to get rid of things she didn't want, not sell things she has. God, will you just shut up already? You're so annoying. Why you gotta be on my case all the time? Back off! I will not back off because you don't listen to a word Mom says. Even if I don't, what does it have to do with you? It's not like I'm causing any trouble. You just enjoy sticking your nose in, don't you? Believe me, I'd be ecstatic if I never had to engage with you again, but unfortunately, you've reinserted yourself into our lives and don't seem to know when to take a hint. You've got some nerve to act like your behavior doesn't affect me. Who was it who had to help pay off all your debts back then? It was me, wasn't it, Colin? Oh yeah, good point. Thanks for that. <laughs> If you feel even an ounce of genuine gratitude for that, then you'll start listening to mom and doing what she says. You didn't even visit her in hospital when she collapsed last year. You only want anything to do with her when there's something in it for you. Are you working? Yeah, of course I am. That's funny, because mom said it doesn't seem like you have a job at all. Mom wouldn't understand even if I told her. I quit my old company and work from home now. Freelance? Yep. It might look like I'm unemployed because I'm at home all day. But it's not like that at all. People from her generation just don't seem to get that people work in all sorts of different ways now. Will you explain to her for me? That working from home is a thing nowadays? She'll listen to you. I'm sure she understands that without needing to hear it from me. I tried to tell her. She seems to have a vague idea what it means. But I don't think the penny dropped yet. So what industry are you in? Um, why do I need to tell you that? I thought you wanted me to explain it to Mom. Jeez, what do you want? My old biography? You'll need to go to specifics. Just give her the gist so she gets off my back about finding work. Excuse me? God damn, you're annoying sometimes. You insist on getting involved at every turn despite the fact you don't even live with us. I'm so glad you're not here. My life would be a living hell. Not to mention Yasgin. She'd probably end up getting bullied. I wouldn't have to get involved if you listened to mom, would I? If you didn't act like a five-year-old kid, I wouldn't have to act like your minder. You pull a vanishing act after palming off your gambling debts on us, then conveniently reappear the moment you're in trouble. Is it any wonder I'm being like this? What's the problem? It doesn't affect you. Wait, you don't think I'm going to make a move on the house or something, do you? No, I don't think you'd do that. What's the issue then? Chill out and quit whining. How about showing a little gratitude to me and my amazing wife for being kind enough to move in with our lonely aged mother? 
You should just enjoy merry life with your husband in your own house and keep your nose out of mine and mom's business. You're hardly a saint yourself, are you? You and him could have moved in with mom to look after her as her health deteriorated, but obviously you didn't want to. Because she's still independent enough that she doesn't need us to... yet. Believe me, we'll be there for her when the time comes. Oh, will you now? Let's face it, you sure as hell won't be. Damn it, sis! Will you just cut me some slack already? It's not like I wanted to go off the radar like that before. I just... Didn't have a choice, you know? I feel hella guilty about the whole debt thing. I was hoping to make it up to Mob by moving in with her. If you feel guilty about what you did, then wonderful. So you should. But seriously? You planned on making it up to her by moving in with her without her permission and staying way longer than you said you would. You have a strange definition of atonement. She'd be better off living on her own than with you and your wife. You know how kind our mom is. She'd do anything for anyone. Why can't you be the same? Why won't you consider how she feels about all this? I do consider that. I do. If you really do, then you'll respect her wishes and hurry up and find somewhere else to live. You're a pair of grown adults. You can't rely on your aged mother forever. Stop being so selfish. Hello, dear. Sorry, I couldn't answer the phone. Is everything okay? Mom, you're out right now, right? Yes, I had some important business to attend to. I'm not at home at the moment. Oh, you're not at the house, are you? Yes, or rather... I was at the house just now. What the hell's going on there? I was so shocked. Why has your bedroom been converted into a storage room? Oh, well, you see, your brother and his wife said they needed to put a few of their things in there. Before I knew it, it looked like... that. Then, as if that wasn't bad enough, they told me I had to get out for a little while. Ugh, those two are taking over your house like it's their freaking God-given right. How dare they? My brother and his wife are out of control. Are you really going to let them get away with this? I gave them a piece of my mind when I was there, but they told me to get lost and kicked me out. You need to get rid of them as soon as you can. Like, right now, if possible. I was thinking of trying to get them to leave... But it's fine. Don't worry. This ends today. Huh? This ends today? What does? Yes, it ends today. What do you mean? Listen, Jane, the thing is, there's something I haven't told you. I didn't want to tell you earlier, but... It was difficult because of Colin and his situation. Where are you now, by the way? I'm parked up in the car at Peep's Donuts near your house. I drove here after those two idiots gave me my marching orders. I bought myself a cup of coffee and some triple chocolate donuts, which I'm currently angrily munching on to stop myself from going back there and brutally murdering them both. I see. I'm sorry you had to go through that, dear. Do you have some time? I want to tell you about my plan. Your plan? What plan? Sure, I have time. Please, whatever you do, don't tell me it involves letting those two asshats stay with you. Not even for a second longer. Oh, I'm sorry I swore, Mom. I'll try to calm down. It's okay, dear. Don't worry. I might look like a pushover, but believe me, I've been doing a lot of thinking. I've made my decision. Besides, didn't I just tell you that this all ends today? 
I decided to sell the house. Hey, sis, you know where mom is? Why? What do you want with her? Forget that. Just tell me where she is. It's like she vanished. What did you expect? You commandeered her bedroom as your own personal storage area and regulated her to living in a freaking cupboard. You promised you'd only be there a couple of months, but way overstayed your welcome and started acting like you owned the place. No one in their right mind would put up with that. Don't tell me you're surprised she reached her wit's end and decided she wanted out. Blah, 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 blah. I didn't ask you any of this crap, Jane. Just show up and tell me where she is already. We have a serious problem here. A bunch of workmen just showed up saying they're here to demolish the house. Yep, Mom sold it. Huh? She sold the house? Yep. And you knew? Yep, she told me a little while ago. That bitch. She tricked us. Wow. Just wow, Colin. Your disrespect towards our mother never ceases to amaze me. You do know the house belonged to her, right? It was hers to do with what she wanted. Maybe so, but this is crossing the line. Me and my wife still live here, but she told me we had to get out this month. What's the problem? It was only ever supposed to be short term. You're the one who promised you would be gone almost two months ago. Things change. We plan on carrying on living with mom indefinitely. Living with her indefinitely? After taking possession of her house and forcing her to live in a cupboard after converting her bedroom into your own personal storage area? It's not like we planned on having her live in the cupboard forever. We were just going to get rid of the stuff in her room. we just been so busy we didn't get around to it. The plan was to get rid of all the useless old junk that was piled up, renovate the house, and have her bedroom transformed into a queen's palace so she could live happily ever after in. The whole cupboard thing was just supposed to be a temporary arrangement. If someone had to live in the cupboard, it should have been you and your wife. Why should mom have to be kicked out of her bedroom in her own house? Yasmin's scared of bugs. I mean, come on, Jane. I can hardly make my life live in a cupboard. You had no issue making your mom live in there. If you're going to lie, at least make it believable, you selfish jerk. Gah! I'm not lying! Get off my back already! So how did you intend to pay for this grand renovation project of yours? Well, we're saving up now. Bull, you're not saving up at all, are you? I know you were trying to get your grubby mitts on Mom's money. You pitched her this wonderful idea of renovating the place and turning it into somewhere fancy and modern so you could all live together happily in. Sure, but what's wrong with that? She'd get to live in it too. I only asked her to contribute a little. There's nothing wrong with that. No. You made her live in the cupboard because she said no to your renovation idea. Does your greed and selfishness know no bounds? How low do you have to stoop before you'll be satisfied? You throw mom's kindness right back in her face. I wish she didn't believe you when you told her you wanted to use moving in together as an opportunity to make up for all that crap you pulled with the debt. Jane, please, I need a favor. Will you call mom for me? I want to apologize for everything. No chance. I won't tell her anything unless she tells me she wants to hear from you. We're not going to have anywhere to live in a few days at this rate. Not my problem. Clean up your own mess. We don't have any money. We can't even afford to rent a place. 
What does that have to do with me or mom? How would me calling her change that? You want her to lend you money, don't you? We can't put out the house on a moment's notice. Surely that's the least she could do for us. Did you take over paying the living expenses when you regulated mom to the cupboard? Why would we do that? She was still in the same house. And it's not like she didn't have a roof over her head. Ah, I see. So you'll be happy as long as you have a roof over your heads then? Well, it just so happens there are tons of abandoned houses in Indiana. Take your pick. You could squat in any one of them for the grand total of zero dollars. Why not just do that? Think about it, it's perfect. You'd have that all-important roof over your head after all. It shouldn't be a problem since you work from home, right? So Jane, the thing is, I'm unemployed. Right, of course you are. So it was exactly as Mom said all along then. Huh? Mom knew damn well you were a jobless bum all along. You had a convenient pack of lies about being self-employed and working from home ready for whenever she called you out on it. But she was the one covering all of the living costs the whole time despite having two working-age adults living with her. What the hell? You kidding me? She scheduled the house for demolition knowing I wasn't working? Do you seriously think you're in any position to complain? You made her live in a cupboard. And took over her house. You disgust me so much it's hard to believe we're even related. Jane, please. How are me and Yasser supposed to get by now? I'm serious. We're going to be homeless. Either tell me where mom is or give us some money. No chance. I pick neither. Please! I'll change my ways. I'll get a job. I'll work hard. I'll bring in tons of money. I'll pay for the house all by myself. I'll never cause you any problems again. I swear. I'll even pay you back the money you put towards giving me out debt. All of it. So please, I'm begging you. I'm a married man, you know. I have a wife to think about now. What kind of husband lets his wife live on the streets? Could you really sleep at night knowing we're begging for money from strangers and rummaging through the garbage just to fight off starvation? Yes, soundly, in fact. In fact, the thought alone brings a smile to my face. If you don't understand already, let me make this crystal clear. I couldn't care less what happens to either of you. You're not the only one who's been pissing me off this whole time, you know. Your freeloading wife shares just as much of the responsibility for everything mom's been through. She never lifted a finger around the house, and in spite of the fact you forced mom to live in a cupboard, Yasmin made her do all the cooking and cleaning on top of it. What the hell is wrong with her? You're both cruel, manipulative, selfish wastes of space. And you're perfect for each other. I hope you burn in hell together. The only reason Yasmin didn't help out around the house is because I said she didn't have to. And why wouldn't she have to? She was living there for free. Whether you told her that or not, if she didn't see anything wrong with it, she's just as bad as you. Anyone with a conscience would have insisted on helping. Jane, I'm sorry. Me and my wife treat mom awfully. I'll never cause her trouble again. I swear. I swear on my life, I'll never cause you or mom any trouble ever again. I'll be the perfect brother and son from now on. Just please find it in your heart to forgive me. And... Can I have some money too? Even just a little is fine. Every little helps. I'm never giving you a single cent of money. Or helping you in any way, shape, or form again for as long as I live. Mom and I have had it with you. I'm amazed we even managed to put up with you for as long as we did. We've decided to cut you out of our lives once and for all. She sold the house, which means you don't have a home anymore. At least not with her. You should be pleased. This means you'll be literally incapable of causing us trouble ever again. (laughs) 
After that, Mom heard from a neighbor that a terrified-looking Colin and Yasmin were seen rushing their belongings out of the house two minutes before the demolition was scheduled to begin. It seems like they thought the workmen wouldn't start work on the demolition process with them still in the house. But little did they know, half by way of intimidation, Mom gave the project to her friend who runs a construction company and told them to begin work irrespective of whether the unwelcome guests were still in the house. When the bulldozer appeared and they realized the house was getting knocked down whether they were inside it or not, they panicked hastily putting their things together and making their escape. My brother tried calling me countless times after that, but I'd run out of patience for him a long time ago and ignored him every time. We haven't spoken or met since. He barraged me with messages desperately begging for help on the day of the demolition, but I left them all on read. I blocked him when I realized my phone vibrating from his incessant attempts at getting through to me was expending my battery. I have no idea where my brother and his wife are or what they're doing these days. But we haven't had any ominous phone calls from the cops, which leads me to believe they're probably still alive and kicking somewhere. Having no way of contacting us and not knowing where we live, me or my mom will most likely never see them again. Even if, by some unfortunate stroke of luck, we do happen to run into them, we most definitely won't be offering any assistance. Mom ended up moving into a nice new build apartment with the money from selling the house. It's really close to mine and my husband's neighborhood, which means we get to see each other a lot more than we used to. I guess it's just like they say, every cloud has a silver lining. Apparently the reason my mom didn't boot Colin and his wife out the moment they showed up was because she thought she could help him turn his life around. Needless to say, she realized that was futile when they made her live in a cupboard. If you ask me, he deserved everything he got after so cruelly betraying Mom's kindness like that. After the dust had settled, Mom cracked a smile and said she didn't regret a thing while we were chatting over a cup of coffee. But I suspect she might have been putting on a brave face. You see, I know how sweet and kind she is, and I'd be surprised if she wasn't at least a little bit hurt over what my good-for-nothing younger brother did to her. As for me, I'll never stop letting her know how important she is to me. My mom's getting old these days, and her health isn't what it used to be. To tell you the truth, I don't know how much time we have left together. But one thing's for sure. I plan on making the most of every last moment by making tons of amazing, joy-filled memories. And being there to support her no matter what, no questions asked, and nothing expected in return. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. 